Welcome to today's webinar, Getting Started with Automated Messages in Constant Contact. And thanks again for joining. Before we fully dive into everything here, I did wanna let you know about all the tools we have available at Constant Contact for your online marketing. So we have our great looking email marketing campaigns that you can create and send out. We have our email automation and welcome emails, which is what we're going through today. List growth tools to help you grow your list. You can do digital ads for Google, Facebook, and Instagram. That'll help you find new customers and it's another way to grow your list. You can stay on top of your social media with Constant Contact as well. You can actually post and reply to social messages within our platform as well. And then we do have our SMS text marketing, which you can add to your plan in order to expand your marketing reach. And it is something you can automate as well, which we'll be touching on today. We've got all of these great tools, features, and our expert guidance that you need all in one place. So feel free to explore all our options. But like I said, today we will focus on that automation. So as you have probably experienced, there's never enough hours in the day when you're running a business or a nonprofit. And that's why automation is really valuable. It allows you to accomplish more with timely, relevant communications that allow you to build the relationships that lead to your success. And I have a lot of uh, good stats here to share. We know that marketing automation increases sales productivity by 14.5% and will reduce overhead by 12.2% on average. Welcome emails are really important. They generate on average 160% higher open rates and 616% higher click-through rates compared to just regular other marketing emails. And automated abandoned cart emails have an average open rate of 29.64%, which is a very solid open rate. And automation doesn't have to be complicated. With the right tools and knowledge, you have a lot of possibilities to get to guide your customers or supporters through a journey that encourages them to take action. From welcoming and nurturing subscribers to building loyalty and integrating with all aspects of your business, you have the ability to automatically communicate with people in the channels they prefer with targeted relevant messages based on their behaviors and actions. So today I'll be helping you understand the ways you can use automation as well as how to set them up right in your account. And more specifically, what we'll be covering today is, first of all, how to engage your audience with automated messages throughout their journey with you. And then we'll be talking about how to create timely relevant automation. And then we will log into a live constant contact account and look at how to, or look at how to set up that automation there. One thing to note as we go throughout the webinar in the demo, the specific, specific features you have are based on the package you've purchased. So that's one of the things in the handout. You can find some information there to find out what package you have as well as the automation features you have in your account. And just to introduce myself a little more formally, my name's Caitlin. I'm a manager on the professional services team here at Constant Contact. I've been here almost 10 years now, uh, which is exciting. And so I have a lot of experience with Constant Contact, online marketing, and excited to share my knowledge with you today. So let's get to it here and talk about some ways you can engage your audience with automated messages. No matter what you're doing, what your business is or your organization is, at the very least, we do recommend an automated welcome email or even a welcome series of emails that lets people get to know your business or organization. When someone signs up for your email list, they're highly engaged right at that moment, so it's a really good time to start communicating with them. 
on your sign up form, you might entice them with something of value to sign up. And then a welcome series is where you can fulfill on the offer. And you can also send out an email letting them learn more about you in general and how to contact you. After you've properly welcomed your new subscribers, you may need to provide some more information to turn them into customers or donors. And that's where a lead nurture email series comes in that allows them to learn more about your business or organization, along with features and benefits, what other people are saying, and then finally asking for the sale or donation. Birthday and anniversary emails are a great way to celebrate yearly while building loyalty. For their birthday, you could simply celebrate with them. You could use it as an opportunity to drive business by offering a free gift or some sort of offer. For anniversary emails, it could be a wedding anniversary, but it's a yearly email, so it could be used to celebrate any sort of milestone with your business or organization. For example, if you're a nonprofit who's an animal shelter, it could be a yearly adoption celebration or an anniversary of their first donation to your cause, which is a good way to encourage their next donation as well. If you offer yearly services or products that need to be serviced, it could be the yearly reminder to renew their membership or the service with you. If you're in real estate, it could be their home buyer anniversary along with some helpful information on maintaining their home or something fun to do in the community. Or it could just be a simple message like, you've been a member or customer since 2001 and thank them for that. Either way, these types of emails are a really great way to stay top of mind and then even drive business or support for your organization. Now, question for you, who here sells products online? Do you wanna just raise your hand? Anyone have like an e-commerce type business? Let's see here, a few of you do. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, for those of you that sell online, the abandoned cart email is a great way to encourage people to finalize their purchase with you. In your account, this email will be triggered when you're connected to WooCommerce or Shopify. So if you use one of those platforms, we have an integration. And then when a customer adds something to their cart but doesn't complete the order, it'll trigger an email to send. And stats show that sending abandoned cart emails increase sales by about 20% on average. Another suggested automated series is an onboarding series. With this, you can set them up for success with their purchase or a volunteer opportunity if they've just signed up to volunteer with your nonprofit. This is your chance to thank them for their purchase, educate them, and help them be successful. The other great thing about this series is when you set them up for success, you can use this series then to ask for feedback with a survey or even an online review that will help you get in front of more people online. An action series is something to consider when you want to get them to do something like register for a class, sign up for your loyalty program, or encourage them to register for an event. This is your chance to give them the reasons why they should take the action and make them feel like they're missing out if they don't take that action. Lastly, an anticipation series is great for building anticipation for an event or even a product launch. This is your chance to provide important details, preparation information, as well as anything educational that's helpful while they wait for your event or product launch to happen. This one's all about keeping up their excitement. How many of you are currently using SMS for, for your marketing? I know uh, someone mentioned that already, Alyssa did. Raise your hand if you're, you're using SMS, thinking about using SMS. That's our text message marketing. 
Yeah, yeah, a few people are in that boat as well. Awesome. So texts are an effective way to reach people where they are. Tech subscribers are your most valuable subscribers and they're more likely to pay attention when they see a text message come through on their phone. When it comes to automation, you can send short messages like what we see here on the screen. And there's a lot of different possibilities for what you can do. You could think about an abandoned cart text message. And that's the one here on the left on the screen. The example on the right is just another example of where you could remind someone to schedule an appointment or a consultation. If you want to learn more about text marketing in Constant Contact, we do have a separate webinar that dives into all of that. So I'll have my colleague Sarah, she's here helping in chat today. Um, she'll send a link to our upcoming session on that if you're interested in looking into that. As you start to think about which automated messages you'll set up, it's important to know you can use email and or text messages to reach people in the channels they prefer. So just remember, it's important to start engaging subscribers right away with a welcome email or series of emails when they're most engaged. I know Elle is, um, she said she was looking to connect with new clients. So this is where you'll wanna focus or at least get started with. After that, you'll want to think about other automations you can implement to build loyalty and celebrate milestones like the birthday and anniversary. And then you can create other email and text message series based on your goals and actions you want them to take, like the nurturing series, onboarding them, or building anticipation for an interested audience. For more detailed information on suggested content for all those series or ideas of what to include. One of the links in our handout that I mentioned has a really helpful guide that breaks down a lot of good suggestions for you. So now that you've got some ideas for ways you can use automation, let's talk about how you can create more timely and relevant communications that get results. Even though we're talking about automated emails, something to keep in mind is it doesn't mean it has to be impersonal to your subscribers. You can create relevant personalized experiences by using the features that we have that send people down relevant paths based on their actions or inactions. So to start out, any automation is kicked off by what we call a trigger. A trigger is a behavior or action that you or your subscriber takes to trigger the workflow of emails or text communications. In your account, an automation can start for individual subscribers when they subscribe to a list through a sign-up form connected with your account, or if you add them to a specific list, if they subscribe for the SMS text messages, if they have an upcoming birthday or anniversary date in your account, if they click a link in an email, or if you're in e-commerce and set up an integration with WooCommerce or Shopify, you can trigger emails when they abandon their cart, when they place an order, or when you've fulfilled their order. This can trigger one email or text to send or a series of messages based on your goals. You can then have your email or text send immediately or you can choose a time delay for how long you want to wait before your message sends. In most cases, we recommend having your first message send pretty quickly. When someone takes an action, they're showing interest in whatever it is. So it's a great way to continue providing the information that they're looking for. Then we have what are called conditional splits that send individual subscribers down different branches of the journey based on their actions or contact details, allowing you to send more personalized targeted messages. These branches can be created based on actions someone takes, like did they click a link in an email or subscribe to SMS, or you can create splits based on their shopping activity with you, such as placing an order, their shipping country, their order value, their number of orders, or even the total number spent on their orders. 
This is a great way to send special messages to your most valuable customers. Conditional splits are also how you take someone out of the flow or stop messages if someone does or doesn't take an action. And in the end, this is what your path would start to look like. You can make things very linear and then use the conditional splits to customize their journey even more, making your automations even more effective. Dynamic content is another powerful way to make the content of your automated emails even more relevant. It can be the same email, but with a block that's relevant based on their contact details. Here's an example from Shabby Chic for an abandoned cart email. The first email is where they've identified someone who should receive a free shipping offer. Another person could then receive a more simple version just featuring the product they left in their cart, while another person receives the same copy but the only change is the featured product is what they left in their cart. Your dynamic content can be powered by things you know about them to create unique text, imagery, and even calls to action and links that are most relevant to them. This is great for featuring the most relevant products and services or even incentivizing them with special offers. So all of that can be based on location information, custom fields, a text or date field, donors, volunteers, their interest, etc., company name or job title. So with that, now that we've talked about engaging your audience with automated messages and learned kind of about how automation works. I'm gonna log into a live Constant Contact account and show you how to use those automation tools. Alrighty, so let's just dive in here. We're gonna come up to the Campaigns tab at the top of the account. And to create our automation path we'll click on create here in the top right and then everything is going to be under this automations option here in the campaign picker and then once we get into here I'm going to pull up our path templates so we can see all the different automated paths available now our automation tool has been recently updated to include all these options that you're seeing here if your account looks different, check out the handout and the link we're putting in the chat for a tutorial that reviews the legacy automation. If you'd like to be upgraded to this newest version we're looking at today, you can reach out to our support team and they can discuss how to get that updated. And just to note again, as we go through the demo, some of the specific features you have access to is based on the package you have. So. Also in the handout, there's a link that shows you how to find what your package is and the features you have associated. So today we'll be diving into the birthday automation and creating a custom path, but there's a few other options here as well. As we've been talking about with Shopify and WooCommerce, here's all your options that you have here. And all of these also have, so they can be just email, or you can see the ones with SMS included as well. And we will actually touch on SMS a little bit later and how that gets included in the automation. I do want to point out the welcome email as well. Let's preview that. As we discussed, setting up a welcome email is essential in your marketing strategy. So at a minimum, make sure you have one email set up to send out to all new subscribers. For best results, a two email welcome series can be even more effective. With a welcome message fulfilling on the offer from your signup form, and then a second email with information on how they can get in touch with you. Because the setup and editing process is the same as our other paths, I'm not going to dig into this. Uh, we'll look at a couple of other options here for the sake of time. So what I want to do is actually start by working with a custom path. This will give you an idea of 
all the automation functions you're able to set up. And then we'll be able to see how to edit an automated path, whether it's from scratch like this, or we do have all these templates. So all the, the functionality will be the same. This custom path is the option you want to choose when you're creating more of that custom content we were talking about earlier, the onboarding series, lead nurture series, things like that. All right, so what I will do is we're going to create an action series uh, to start out here. So first we need to choose the trigger. You'll see all the options here. I'm going to go with added to a specific list but many other options, like I said. Our focus with this series is gonna be promoting a cycling club to those who have signed up to get more information about it and are added to a specific list. So now let's go to the next part and we do need to name this path. So I'll just call it Southside Action Series, and put today's date and click create. So then it starts us out with our trigger here. And we need to edit this and specify which list should be connected to this automated series. So I'll click here on the three dots and click edit. And then I will choose the list. So you could have one list, multiple lists, but you want to use the list that these people are being added to when they express interest. So I have one called Cycling Club Prospects that I will use. So I've indicated that here and then I'll click Save. And these people, like I said, they're added to this list when they sign up for information from the website. So it's a really good way to, they ask for information, and then they'll get emails automatically. All right, so we're ready to create the first email in the series. Everything here on the left is how you're gonna build this out. And it's a drag and drop. So to add the first email, we will click and drag that in right here. And then we need to edit this. So I'll click on the three dots and click edit. And then you can start from scratch. You can create a new email and choose from any of our templates that we have here in Constant Contact, or you can copy an existing email and use one you've created before, whether it's like a master template you've made or even something you've sent out for a previous campaign or anything like that. So that's what I'm gonna go with here. So it's showing all my campaigns. I'm gonna go with this one I pre-created ahead of time. And then you'll name it. So this is gonna be email number one. And it's going to be reasons why. So we're gonna be talking about the reasons why to join the club. And I'll just put today's date and we will continue. So this template's already been created with the suggested content for email number one of an action series. We're talking about here three reasons why someone should join the club. You'll see that pop up here. So this is mostly set up. I don't need to make too many edits, but I did wanna point out that dynamic content option I was talking about earlier. Like I mentioned, dynamic content allows you to send the email to a broad group of people with the content customized to their interests specifically. So you can customize it based on location, company, job title, or any custom fields. So to do that, I will hover over the block that I wanna make dynamic, and I'll click here on this light bulb that comes up. So then I will toggle it on give it a name and indicate the field. So for this example, I could have only people in Massachusetts see this block, and then I could have a separate block to send a different call to action for people in Colorado who would join the club virtually rather than in person. So you'll see what I mean here. So I will label the block Massachusetts, and only I see that name. 
that's just a way to label it here. And then we choose the field. So in this case, I'm working with the state. If you have any custom fields, they'll show up in this list, but we don't have any custom fields, so that's why you don't see anything else. So state, we'll change this to is Massachusetts. And then I'll click save. So then you'll see how it indicates here people in Massachusetts will see this button. So then I'll do the same thing with this call to action here. I'll click on the light bulb. Turn that on. We will call this one Colorado. And then we'll say the state is Colorado. And I'm seeing a question here. How does it know what state they are in? Yeah, that's a good question. So this is pulling from their contact information. So I would have had to, when I'm uploading my contacts or adding them to my contacts page, they would need to have the state field filled in with this information. So it's something I've set up or it's something you can ask for on the signup form as well to automate it even more. So if we save that, you'll see here how this looks. So now we have our two dynamic blocks there. Now, something to note is you do want to have other blocks that aren't dynamic so that everyone sees, just in case someone didn't fill in their state, the it's accidentally left blank, or it's a different state. They won't see either of these then, but they'll at least see you know all the rest of the content. You don't want people getting a blank email. Uh, with that, we're good to go here, so I'll click Save and Close. And I want to add in two other emails here to our flow. So once again, we will drag and drop in an email, click the dots, and click Edit. And then I'll copy in another one here, choose the one I want. And we'll rename this email to Highlight Unique Aspect, because that's what we're going to be doing here. We're going to highlight a unique aspect of this club. All right, so this already has all the contents. We're highlighting a unique aspect of the cycling club, what they have to look forward to, hoping to get them to sign up here. So there we go, that's good to go. I'll click Save and Close. And then I wanna add in one more. So once again, just drop it on in here. And we'll edit this. Then I'll just go through that same process one more time. So we'll copy in our third email. We'll name it email three. This is where you want to have a fear of missing out. So you're talking about something in the club that, that they want to do. They don't want to miss out on it. So this template here already has the content as well. They're going to see some pictures of people biking and hopefully want to do that themselves as well. So then I'll click save and close. And we're set with the emails. So you'll see we have our flow started here. So now that I have these added, I need to set our timing. After the trigger and in between each email, I can add a time delay to space this out how I want it. So for the first email in between the trigger and email one, I'm going to drag in a time delay and I'm going to edit this. So what we're going to set it up to do is when they're added to a list, I'm going to have it wait one day and then they'll get the first email. So it'll send the next day to them. If you're doing like a welcome series, I would have this send almost immediately um an hour even less immediately that one you want them to get is while they're still thinking about the them signing up so it waits a day they get the first email 
And then we want to have a delay between email one and two. So let's drag in another one of those. And this, let's edit it here. We'll make it three days. So it'll wait three days. You can see there's different options here for the timing. We're just working with days for this one. So it'll wait three days and then they'll get another email. And then we want to have a delay between email two and three. So once again, we drop that in. Let's make this three days as well. Edit three days. Okay, so now we're pretty much complete here. Um, people will go through, they'll get these three emails, and then they'll reach the end of the series. Now, let's say once someone has gone through, they've gotten all three of these emails, let's say we want to follow up with the people who are still interested. So they've made it through all three. And let's say we want to have one more email go out to everyone who clicked a link in this final email. To do that, we would use our conditional split. So let's drop one of those in here. Now you'll see what it did. It created a yes and a no path. So we can start getting more targeted and more specialized with who we're reaching out to. So we need to edit first this condition. This works like a trigger. So if I click the three dots to edit this, you'll see we can either do contact activity or shopping activity. Shopping activity is for the e-commerce, the Shopify or WooCommerce. Contact activity is what we'll do now. So you can either have it trigger uh, when they click on a link in an email, click on a link in an SMS. Uh, we don't have any SMS in this one. And then SMS status. So this would be like if they subscribe to SMS, it would trigger a text to send. But for us, we're gonna go with click to link, any link. You can also do just a specific link if you really wanna get targeted. So they clicked any link from email three, which is this email, and then save that. So now we've set it up to where if they click a link in email three, they're going down this path. If they don't click a link in email three, they're going down this path. So then we need to set up what's happening here on these paths. So we want an email to go out to the people that clicked a link because we're assuming if they clicked on something, they're still looking into it, they're still thinking about it, and we wanna send them one more message to stay top of mind. So first we'll drag in our email that we want them to get here. And then you edit this exactly the same way. For the sake of time, I'll just kind of choose a random one here. Maybe we copy email number one and then tweak it. You don't want to send out the same exact email in a series here because they'll probably notice. And then it, it does look more impersonal if it's kind of the same thing over and over. So we would, you know, as an example, tweak this, do one more follow-up, um, switch out the picture, whatever we want here, and then save and close. And then you can either, even bring in time delays to this. So we could drag this in and say, they click on a link in email three, we'll give it a week and then send them one more email. We're starting to space it out a little bit more so it's not as many emails in a short amount of time. Um, so I'm gonna leave it as one week. I like that time frame there. Now, what I'm actually gonna not do is add anything to this no path. So we're gonna make it to where if they don't click a link in email three, they're done. They're, they've they come to the end. But if they do, they get through this part of the path and then they'll be done here. So now everything is good to go. We can scroll through and see how it all flows. It's mostly linear, um, but then it does branch off there at the end. 
So now we'll activate it. So once it's active, we'll let it load up for us here. We'll get some reporting. So it you'll be able to see how many people have started in this flow, how many it's sent to, how many clicked, click rate. And then it actually breaks down each email for sends, opens, clicks, and then conversions and revenue come from the Shopify or WooCommerce emails that you've set up. So that's definitely great to keep an eye on, see how things are going there. You can edit the, the path from this page. With this, your contacts continue to progress through the path. So anyone that's still in this flow will keep going. Once you save the changes, then they'll get the new emails, but they'll continue on with the what's already in there until you save the new information. You can also come up here and copy it. You can disable the trigger, which will prevent anyone from starting the path, but contacts who've already entered the flow will continue until they finish. Or you can just completely end it all together. That'll remove all contacts from the flow. No further actions will be taken. All right, so that's kind of all the functionality in a nutshell. Now I do wanna show you Another example that you can set up, which is the birthday automation, because that's something we talked about as well. So let's go back. So you could create a custom path exactly like we did and just have the birthday be the trigger, or even easier, use one of our templates here. So I want to take a look at the birthday SMS. That way you can see how to set up both a birthday or SMS message, depending on what their subscription status is. So let's click into that. All right, so here's a preview of what it will look like. Let's go ahead and create that. So what's really nice here is everything's already built out. Now you can keep dragging in things from the left side. You can keep customizing it, but it does have it sort of the initial flow set up for us to Save us some time here. So we do need to start with the trigger again. So we'll click the three dots and edit that. And we need to choose here, do we want this to send on their birthday or before their birthday? So I'm gonna go with before. You can have it go up to 14 days before. Let's say I'll do seven. So this means they have a week before their birthday. If I'm offering a coupon or something like that, it gives them some time to use the coupon. And then you can even indicate what list. It could go to people on any list, anyone, or one or more specific lists. That option is good for maybe only like your members get a birthday promotion or you have a VIP group of people that get the, the birthday. But I'm just gonna stick with any list and save that. All right, so the conditional split is already set up and good to go. So this is set up to where they join the yes path if the SMS status is subscribed. So if they're subscribed as an SMS contact, they'll go this direction and get a birthday text. If they're not subscribed to SMS, if they're subscribed to email only, they'll go down this path and get a birthday email. So both of these things need to be edited. So let's edit our text message real quick here. So we name the SMS, I'll call it Jack's Barbecue Birthday Text. Put today's date. All right, so then we just need to write our message and that's just a matter of typing that on in here so we'll say happy birthday from Jack's barbecue and 
mention this text for 25% off your next meal. All right, so you can personalize this with their name, add emojis, customize that however you need, but then you'll click save and close and that's good to go there. Then we'll edit the email. And this is exactly the same as the other uh, series we were looking at. So we'll name this Jack's Barbecue Email. And this time I'm actually going to create a new email just so you can see the templates. So it'll pull up some birthday templates for me. If you're doing an anniversary email, it'll pull up anniversary templates, but you can search for anything. And then you'll see here's a few options. Let's go with our birthday promo. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna edit this, but I would do you know, kind of a similar thing. Talk about a 25% off coupon. I definitely want to put in my logo, you know, edit this however I need to. But then once it's good to go, we'll click save and close. So like I said, you can continue to build on to this. You can add more emails, more texts, a time delay, a conditional split. But I don't need to. It's loading a little slowly here. Let's go ahead and click. Let's see if we can refresh this here. Let's go ahead and activate it. And then we'll get the same sort of reporting that we saw with the other one. There we go. All right, so that is everything. Uh, another quick reminder, like I said, whatever plan you're signed up for does determine which of these features you have access to. So if you wanna come up here in your account and go to plans and pricing, That'll break it down for you, see what you're signed up for now, see if you want to change it, anything like that. My colleague will also put a link uh, in the chat window for that as well. I see a question from Christine, so I'm just reading that real quick. If you've already sent a campaign, say a newsletter, if we set up an automated email now, would it still work even though the newsletter campaign already went out? or would you have to have that ready before emailing out the campaign? So the newsletter would be just completely separate from this. So if you've sent that out to a list of people, they got that email. If you wanna set up an automated path with that same email, you can, because um, you do have that copy option. You can copy in any email you've created before. You wouldn't want to send it out to the same people, so you'd probably have like a new list of people you're adding into that list to start the flow. Or if you want to send out something different from the newsletter, definitely you can. They kind of they just work separately from each other. So you could have people in an automated flow, but also send them a newsletter. They'll just get you know both emails depending on where they are in the flow, what date you sent out or scheduled out the email. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me know if if it doesn't. But yeah, I mean, you can do automation on top of just regular newsletters, which I would recommend. Sometimes if it's time sensitive, you wouldn't really use an automation for that necessarily because um, you want to make sure they get it by a specific date then. Um, this is more for, and you can do the dynamic content to make it more specific for different things, but this would be, it's almost like an ongoing thing that you have set up. All right, well, let's start to wrap up here. We'll get to any other questions you have as well here in a second, but I just want to recap here. So first of all, as a reminder, use a welcome series. Let them get to know you. That's one of the most important automations you can set up. Everyone should at least do that. 
And then you can use other automated emails and series to guide people through a journey with you. Remember to send those relevant messages at the right time. And then take it to the next level. Create more customized experiences for subscribers by incorporating more timely relevant content in the messages they prefer and based on their actions and behaviors as well. And don't forget, we're here to help. If you need help putting together a marketing plan, coming up with content for some of these emails, list growth strategies, if you need someone to just do this all for you, we have those options. We have marketing services that can be personalized to your goals. Your dedicated marketing expert makes it easy for you throughout getting your account set up and beyond. You can work on a strategy, and develop and implement a successful marketing plan. Rates start as low as $50 a month for that. I lead the marketing advisor team, and I can tell you all of our customers in that program love working with a marketing advisor and see a lot of success. So if you're interested, you can sign up for a free consultation. Just talk it over with someone, see if it's something that'll work for you. And if it is, they can get you signed up. But other than that, uh, let's go ahead and get to your questions. Go ahead, type those in. We'll try our best to get the answers to all your questions. We do have a lot of resources to help as well if you think of a question later or we don't happen to get to your question. While everyone is sending those in, I did wanna let you know about our upcoming webinar. I mentioned it a little earlier called Getting Started with Text SMS Marketing and Constant Contact. This goes through all the information you need to set up and get started with SMS text marketing and constant contact. So that SMS tool I showed you earlier, you do have to be signed up and have everything set up for SMS marketing. So this webinar digs into how to do all of that. If you're not able to attend, register anyway. We can send you a free recording of that session um, that you can watch on your own time. The next upcoming one is May 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. The link's there in the chat. Let's go ahead and get to your questions here, see what we have. Okay, here's a question. Can you show an example of an abandoned cart email? Yes, let me let me show you that. Let's come back here. Oh, let me uh, follow up with Christine's question real quick um, to make sure we we get that clarified. So she said, if we're planning to send a newsletter and we want people to receive more emails from us, if they click on links in the newsletter, we should have those automated emails ready to go ahead of sending out the newsletter. Yeah. Yeah, that would be best then. Um, if you're wanting people to click on links in the newsletter, something you can do, uh, we have something called um, click segmentation, so you can send out a newsletter, make it to where they click on a link, that adds them to a list, and then you could create a series that's connected to that list, and then they'll be in that flow automatically. But you would have to have that set up ahead of time. If you don't, you could still manually add them to a list, and that would trigger them to get the emails as well. So what the trigger is, is in the example I showed, it's just them being added to a list, whether they added themselves through a click or whether you added them, um, they just need to be added to trigger it. Hopefully that helps. And click segmentation, um, when you're adding a link in an email, anytime you add a link, there's just a box you can check if you want that to be, uh, have the click segmentation. Okay, well, let's look at an abandoned cart real quick here. Because, yeah, it's, um, it's a little different, but also mostly the same. Uh, it's just the trigger that's different. So if we come back to the templates, I could do a custom 
path to build that, but really I do like the templates because these are still completely customizable. They just give you something to start with so you don't have to build it all up from scratch. So, um, and there's lots of options. Thank yous, welcomes, win back, requesting a review. Um, and there's different abandoned cart ones too. There's one that includes SMS. There's one that splits it out by domestic and international so that shipping can be adjusted based on their location. There's just a more standard email, high value versus low value cart split. So it gets really specific, but let's just go with um, abandoned cart reminder, email and SMS. So this is kind of what it looks like. We'll get into it here. Okay, so with this, um, the trigger is when someone abandons their cart, it'll wait four hours, but I could change that, make it sooner or later. They get sent this email. Let's edit that so you can see what that looks like. So this is, um, it's really cool. You need to edit it to add your logo. You can change the text. But then there's this product block. This fills in automatically with the product they left in their cart. And then there's also a link that gets generated automatically that takes them back to their cart. So that's mostly all set up. You just have to make a few tweaks. And then it has a time delay. It'll wait four hours. If they're subscribed to SMS, they will also get a text four hours later. If they're not subscribed to SMS, they'll get another text uh, four hours, or no, not a text, an email four hours later. So you could change that though. If you don't want them to get another message that same day, you could do like one day, a week might be too long. You could even do like three days, you really don't want to wait too long though because even three days later they might have forgotten about it or found a, a similar product from a different you know like your competitor that they bought or something like that but that's basically how it works same editing flow it's just set up mostly for you and then you just make some tweaks and you activate it and you're good to go Here's a question, if I don't want someone to continue in a series, can I take them out? So with that, that's where conditional splits come in as well. Um, if we go back to our example, this might be kind of hard to show, but let's edit this. So I can make this more, more targeted. So I could have it to where like after every email, there's a conditional split. So like if they did click on a link, then they stop the path because they've already taken the action I want them to. But if they don't click a link, you could have them go down this no path. Um, but then you you kind of keep keep going with the the no path. You could add another split. It's hard to show you in in you know a couple minutes, but you can get you know as detailed as you need, depending on it's all based on their actions. So you think about what action you want them to take. If they do take it, you could have the path end for them. If they don't take it, you could keep going or vice versa. Maybe if someone's not interested, you don't want to keep marketing to them and you only want to market to the people that are interested and are taking actions. So this is pretty messy. doesn't really make sense anymore, but that's how you would do that is adding in these splits to just really make it specific for different people. All right, well, I think that's all I'm seeing. 
like I said, if you think of anything else, check out our resources. If you have questions about the topics today, there's FAQs, tutorials, more webinars. You can click the help link at the top right of your account or just go to constantcontact.com slash help. We also have a great support team. So feel free to give them a call or chat them. I'll also have my colleagues share a link to all of our webinars. Along with the session on SMS, we have many other helpful sessions. Um, you know, we were talking about creating emails today. If you haven't done that yet, you know, maybe you need to take a step back and learn how to create an email first. We have a whole webinar on that. It's called Create and Send or How to Create and Send Your First Email. So there's lots of other topics, social media, um, list segmentation. That's where we get into like the click segmentation, creating tags and segments. And that's another thing you can sort of, uh, if you have segmented lists, those you can connect to an automation and then you're like really targeting the right people and that's where you see the most success. So check any of those out that you're interested in. They're free. You always get a recording if you attend or if you don't. Either way, you get a recording. But other than that, when I close out of the webinar, there's a survey that pops up. If you want to give your feedback real quick, it's just for quick questions. We always like to read through your feedback there. But with all that said, thanks for joining us for the webinar today and have a good rest of your day.